Alright, so I know I'm late as usual on this one, but you know, the boy's been busy. I've been trying to get content out as much as I possibly can, so forgive me. But, yo, MHA is really going on for more chapters, and I really don't know how I feel about it, because though I don't think everything was properly handled in the war, and I think some things could have gotten more attention and time to breathe, I don't know how I feel about it running on so much longer, and from what I've seen, this chapter in and of itself feels like it could have been a nice ending, or one more chapter after this could have been a nice ending, but it seems like they're going with way more after this, so let's see what Horikoshi has in store. But before we get into it, you guys know the deal, make sure to drop a boy a like and subscribe, and let's get into talking about today's chapter. So we pick up actually in America, where we continue to follow the story where that newscaster was talking about clouds and the weird weather patterns that were happening because of the battle in Japan. Now apparently that all of that has gone away and they're sorry for the misreport. But apparently now there's some really strong winds, and where those strong winds are coming from is actually from Deku's punch that defeated All For One. If you remember from the first chapter, All Might actually did something similar where he punched the sludge villain so hard that it changed the weather from rainy to sunny. Now I wonder if this is kind of the same thing, which is kind of crazy because Deku changed the weather all the way in the United States, which is like insanely powerful. Which brings into question, how strong was Deku in that final fight? Was he truly at 100% or was he well past 100%? Because how is his arm still on his body? Anyway, let's get to it. But now after the battle, we kind of begin to see like the reconstruction phase, and we actually see that a couple of heroes from America and various other countries are here to help, which hella late by the way, and I said this from several chapters ago, but I wonder if now that they're here, we're gonna see them more in like different settings in Japan now. But we see these young kids as we see that their house is being reconstructed, and we do see the other heroes. I believe this one is from Egypt, I can't remember his name and some various other heroes from the My Hero movies, like this tiger guy, well not tiger, lion guy. And we finally get to see Koichi, which this is kind of all we get of him, but seeing as the series is going to continue, maybe he might show up some more. But if this is all we see of Koichi after all that hype up, I'm going to be real pissed off. But yes, due to them having quirks, the cleanup process has gone astronomically faster. Because without quirks, it would have apparently taken about 10 years, but it seems like they're going to be able to fix everything up in a couple of months, which is crazy, because look at what Shigaraki did to Mount Fuji. This man said he didn't even destroy anything in the end. Cap. But we finally pick up with our main cast, and we see Bakugo, whose arm is in a cast, and the surgeon is telling them that they're basically surprised that his arm is still functioning, but they've been trying to get it in a more stable state. But the best case scenario for him is actually just cut the arm off and actually get a prosthetic, which Bakugo doesn't really want because his quirk literally functions through the sweat in his arms, which is a little confusing because we literally saw him using like explosions with his mouth earlier, so I don't know how that exactly works. And I think that's kind of a continuity error, honestly. Well, Bakugo's really not trying to hear all that, so he's going to keep resting and he's going to kick this rehab's ass. But the doctor also adds that he's not really concerned about his arm per se, but it's actually his heart. Because apparently he would have died if Edshot didn't intervene, and it's actually a miracle that Bakugo's even still alive. So if he really wants to keep on living, he should focus on just resting and not fighting for right now because his heart is literally being held together by the strings of another human being. Which, I don't know if Edshot's still alive, by the way. I'm pretty sure he still is, but like, is he just like the little, little, you know what he looks like? But anyway, we cut to another hospital room where we see both Deku and All Might lying together, and they realize that they're in the same room, which, which is probably just Tsukauchi is doing. As Deku asks All Might how he's doing, and he just says that a doctor said he's never had to use so many bolts before. And Deku is realizing that he can finally start feeling his arms again, which is kind of surprising seeing as he used like a full power punch that literally changed the weather earlier. But Deku is lamenting that in the end, he really couldn't save Shigaraki, and he's kind of disappointed in himself. Because in the end, even Tanko wanted to be the leader of the League of Villains. But All Might kind of gives him a different perspective and asks him, as someone who had a near-death experience, let me ask you, how did his face look in the final moments? As we see this panel saying, you already destroyed it, that will depend on what you guys do from now on so you better do your best. Which, I don't actually remember Deku seeing this in the Vestige world, so I wonder if this is something that happened off screen. But All Might says if you didn't see him as a crying boy, that means you saved him after all. And he says just like the big mission of One for All, you pass it on, so it must have reached him. So yes, in a sense, he did save him. As Deku starts to mumble the words, I can still feel the embers. As Bakugo comes bursting into the room, shocked at what he just heard, and realizing that that means that Deku's quirkless. Which, I don't know how I feel about the whole embers thing. That was literally like, a whole talking point of the last chapter, which is immediately being thrown out the window right here, so... I don't know, this is kind of the issue I have with the series, where they kind of say one thing, and then they do something else, and then they completely forgot that they said it in the last chapter, or they said it several chapters ago, and they completely forget about it, which... That's a big continuity error if you're gonna say it literally last chapter, that he literally transferred the last bit of embers, and that it's now back, I guess? I don't know. But Deku's technically not Quirkos Quirkos, but he has somewhat of a quirk. 
As Bakugo feels sad that now Deku's gonna be quirkless and not necessarily a rival to him, but after everything he fought that in the end he's just gonna go back to being powerless. And Deku seems to be taking it on a chin because he's like, hey, I was quirkless to begin with, so it doesn't really feel like doing much. And yeah, he only really had the quirk for like a year and a half, so it doesn't really, like, it's gonna change his life all that much. But weirdly, this news affects Bakugo so much that he just starts breaking down and crying here. And even Izuku is kind of wondering, what the hell is going on? Why is he crying? As Bakugo begins to explain, he was like, I just feel bad because he was like, I've, all those times he's made fun of him and he thought that this would finally be a moment that he can actually compete for so long. And Deku's just like, hey, he still has the Ember, so, you know, it's still a chance that they can, they can still keep fighting. And all my chimes in by saying, no, you've both gotten strong because Deku's grown stronger than that boy that first ran into a flaming battle to try to save Bakugo to this great hero that All Might could look up to even himself. And Bakugo, if it wasn't for him, All Might wouldn't even be here to have this conversation right now. So in a sense, they're both All Might's hero, and he thanks them so much. As Deku starts to deliver the final lines of the chapter, and when he says, When I was a kid, I thought peace came back immediately, after World War was over. But, and we see both Todoroki facing away from the camera, which I wonder if this is because he is severely burned from top to bottom, and I think we're going to see that in the next chapters. And we see Ochako, who's also looking sad. I think that both of them have failed in their missions to save their respective people as well. But continuing, Deku says that their story will just end and you'll just get the brighter future they were fighting for and that they'll go beyond. As we see Deku with the cut that just shake the internet, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, as he's staring at what looks like a destroyed UA with Ida and Kaminari as they walk towards the building, possibly to go back to school. And that is the end of the chapter. And as for a rating for this chapter, I don't know if I'm a really rated. Like, I think the rating thing is getting kind of lame anyway, and it doesn't really encompass my overall thoughts of this series. Because though I think a respective chapter might be good, like, I think this one's really good, I don't think it actually emphasizes the overall thoughts of this story. So I'm going to just cut the ratings starting from now. But overall, though, I do think this was a good um, chapter, but there are still some various questions left for the series. So I'm a little grateful that Horikoshi's continuing it, but from the way he described it, he said he wanted to go back to the academia part of My Hero Academia, which I'm a little bit confused about because I don't really know what these kids have left to learn. They basically did the jobs of the heroes and really sacrificed a lot for the heroes because a lot of them quit. So it's kind of like these kids are more heroes than the heroes that are teaching them at this point. Now, if he goes and tackles all the like societal issues that were plaguing them like from before, because now the system's kind of going back to square one, which if it goes back to square one, that means that everything that the heroes fought for will just end up repeating itself because there will be another villain king born. There will be another person who is much stronger than any of them can deal with. And the society is going to have to figure out a way to tackle how do we prevent this from continuously happening. And again, they kind of talked about the whole quirk singularity thing, and I don't really know if they've truly emphasized how we're going to tackle and deal with that issue down the line. Now, are they going to go to various countries? That would also be kind of interesting to see because I would love to, for them to actually explore America a lot better because the crime in a lot of the other areas is actually a lot worse than it was in Japan, Not, I mean, prior to the war. And I wonder if they're going to tackle the, all this stuff that Awful One put into place that prevented all the other nations from really intervening because he put several villains in place that if they left their country that basically they would end up taking over. And as for Deku's new look, honestly, I kind of been indifferent about it. Like, I don't think it looks great for him. I think he should just cut all his hair off if he was gonna cut it off. The whole like mohawk thing looks kind of odd, but I think that this is just a scar. So he obviously doesn't want his hair to look like this. I think it's just that the circumstances he's in now leads his hair to look like that. So I think it, we're not gonna see this long term. So if you hate it, well, it's probably gonna be gone before you know it. But overall, don't necessarily how I feel about the story continuing on much longer because this feels like a finale and I don't know how I feel about it running on a little longer. It might sour the story, but it could also fix some of the issues because there's a lot of things left to tackle. And again, I just have to save that for another video because there's just so much that I think Horikoshi kind of missed out on. But I don't think that it makes the story bad. I just think that it was a little cheesy not to tackle these things or not to really like let these things breathe. And I'm also confused because I'm like, you rushed the finale, but now you want to slow down the last few chapters to really tackle all the stuff you miss. It just feels like secondhand. But again, he was sick and he was not able to continue, like write the ending how he wanted to. And it's gone on a lot longer than he was expecting. So I'm assuming that this was already planned for, but he just thought he would have more time to expand on things like he wanted to. 
But overall though, still good manga, still a good series, and at some point I would like to cover the anime, but god dang, they gotta stop releasing these chapters because I've just been so swamped trying to deal with these. But anyway, that's all I gotta say for now, so stay safe my ninjas, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.